Imagine one of your normal days. The alarm clock's constant beeping wakes you up and serves as a reminder that the demands of the day are already at your door. You peek at your phone as you rush to get ready for work, school, or the plethora of duties that are waiting and see the constant stream of emails, texts, news updates, and social media alerts. The world seems to never stop moving and is constantly vying for your attention. As soon as you step outdoors, you are surrounded by a sea of rushing people, horn blaring cars and sirens. Life seems to move at an unrelenting pace, and the internal and external noise is overwhelming. Have you ever wondered, where is God in all of this? Among the pressures and diversions of life? How can we find peace and tranquility in a world that never seems to stop? The narrative I just gave is a reflection of the struggle that many of us go through every day. Modern life is fast-paced, noisy, and frequently characterized by a perpetual sense of urgency. Finding calm, recognizing God, and getting inspiration from our Christian religion can seem like difficult endeavors in such a world. The message we will discuss today, however, is most relevant in the midst of this daily upheaval. The phrase, be still and know that I am God, has been used throughout history as an invitation to find serenity in the midst of chaos, to find divine wisdom in the midst of perplexity, and to feel Jesus, our shepherd, with us always, even in the busiest of streets. Let's consider how the message, be still and know that I am God, can help us discover moments of peace, learn to know God better, and find inspiration from our Christian faith in the midst of our busy everyday lives as we set out on our journey of faith together. The command to be still is a timeless and spiritually significant teaching found in the Bible, especially in Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. This seemingly straightforward instruction holds tremendous insight and transformative potential for those who desire to understand and embrace it. The phrase be still is fundamentally an invitation to accept solitude and stillness in our lives. Finding moments of silence can be a precious find in a society where noise, distractions, and continual bustle are the norm. We may actually listen, contemplate, and connect with the depths of our souls and with God in these silent moments. Imagine a large, serene lake at dawn, its surface reflecting the soft tones of the sky. The water's quiet makes for an ideal reflection. Similar to this, when we quiet ourselves, we make room in our hearts for reflection, where we can more clearly see and hear God. The development of inner serenity is inextricably tied to being still. It's an invitation to let go of the racing thoughts that frequently run amok inside of us, producing stress and confusion. When we learn to be still, we give our hearts and brains the space to find peace and tranquility. Imagine a sea that has experienced a storm where the waves are crashing and the air is chaotic. A lighthouse remains tall and unyielding amid this mayhem. Being still is like running to that lighthouse for safety. It is a haven of calm amidst the storms of life. Finding peace is not the only goal of the command to be still. It is also about developing a closer, more personal relationship with God. We can enter a sacred area where the divine can speak to us when we turn off the noise of our own minds and the outside distractions. Imagine having a private, relaxing encounter with a close friend away from the bustle of a large gathering. You may actually connect and get to know each other's souls in this private situation. Similar to this, being still enables us to have a precious encounter with God in which we can get to know Him better. Giving up our desire for control is another aspect of being still. It acknowledges that there is a bigger power at play and that we are not ultimately in control of our fate. We discover freedom in this surrender because we let go of the burden of attempting to control every element of our existence. Imagine a bird in flight, gracefully gliding through the wind currents. The bird gives up, trying to control the wind, and instead submits to it. In the same way, when we are still, we give in to the divine currents of God's design because we know that His wisdom is far superior to our own. Finally, being still is a source of power and renewal rather than a passive state. It serves as a source of spiritual sustenance for us. We can refuel our souls, acquire perspective, and find the fortitude to meet life's obstacles in quiet moments. Imagine a weary traveler stopping at a peaceful oasis to sip from a cool, refreshing spring. 
Being still is our place of spiritual solace where we can savor the blessings of God's presence and re-energize for the path ahead. The spiritual journey of understanding the command to be still is significant. It is a call to embrace isolation and stillness, nurture inner serenity, get to know God better, let go of control, and find rebirth and strength. It's a summons that, if answered, may result in a life that is more peaceful, fulfilling, and spiritually rich. A universal path, the desire for tranquility and harmony inside ourselves is the search for inner peace. The need for inner calm resonates strongly within our emotions in a world that is chaotic, stressful, and uncertain. This investigation dives into this quest's significant facets and how it affects our lives. A condition of being where the turbulence of our thoughts and emotions settles down is what is meant by inner peace, which is more than just the absence of exterior disturbance. Inside a tranquil oasis unaffected by life's storms exists. It can be compared to the stillness found in the middle of a spinning wheel. No matter how quickly the wheel rotates, there is a location of absolute peace at its center. The need for wholeness lies at the heart of the search for inner calm. We strive to mend the wounds in our spirits and reconcile the broken pieces of our existence. It's a process of accepting all of who we are, our strengths and weaknesses, joys and sorrows, in a comprehensive manner. It's a journey of self-discovery. Think of a mosaic created from glass shards Despite being unique, each piece adds to the beauty of the whole. Similar to this, when we seek inner peace, we put our lives' broken parts together to form a mosaic of wholeness. We frequently turn to the exercises of presence and mindfulness in our search for inner tranquility. It involves giving your all to the current moment without worrying about the past or the future. We learn that true peace only exists in the here and now when we are in this condition of presence. Imagine being completely engrossed in the beauty of the present. The soft ripples, the rustling leaves, the orchestra of nature, while standing on the shore of a tranquil lake. Worries and other distractions disappear in this condition of presence, making room for a profound serenity to infuse our hearts. Our attachment to things, people, and situations frequently interferes with our ability to experience inner calm. The pursuit of peace teaches us to accept life's transience and acknowledge that change is the only constant. We become more receptive to lasting peace when we let go of our attachment to the transitory. Imagine a young toddler holding a bag of sand. Even when tightly grasped, the sand manages to escape the fingertips. However, if the child opens their palm, they can still feel the sand without having to grab it. Similar to this, as we pursue inner peace, we discover how to accept life's joys with an open heart, relishing them while realizing their transience. Inner peace is a fortitude that helps us weather the storms of life with grace, not a condition of unwavering calm. It is the capacity to overcome hardship and have faith that tranquility can return even in the most trying circumstances. We learn through this journey that inner calm and resilience go hand in hand. Think of a tree that is swinging in a strong wind. It flexes and bends but it doesn't lose its stability. Similar to this, as we seek inner peace, we strengthen our resilience so that we can face adversities in life without crumbling. It's evidence of the power that comes from inner tranquility, a profound path of self-discovery, mindfulness, accepting change and building resilience, the search for inner peace. It is an aim that unites people of all cultures and speaks to the core desires of the human soul. Through this journey, we discover not just tranquility, but also a deep feeling of unity and meaning in the fabric of our lives. A fundamental tenet of faith is to put one's total trust in God's providence and divine purpose. And this is what it means to trust God's plan. It is a recognition that God, in the wisdom and knowledge of His omnipresence, arranges events and situations in our lives for the greatest good. Here we explore the tremendous implications of putting our faith in God's plan and how it affects our perspective and faith. The act of relinquishing control is at the core of trusting God's plan. It is the concept that human understanding and control over outcomes are finite. When we put our faith in God's plan, we let go of the need to control every detail of our lives and instead put our trust in His omniscient wisdom. Consider a ship's skipper at the helm in a storm. Even though the route ahead appears hazardous, 
the captain must have faith in the navigational instruments and maps in order to sail successfully. In the same way, we put our faith in God to guide us through life's storms with His omniscient wisdom. Accepting divine timing is another aspect of believing in God's plan. It recognizes that even when God's timing doesn't match our preferences or expectations, it is still flawless. This part of trust promotes endurance and a strong belief that God is aware of the ideal time for each event in our lives. Imagine a gardener who sows seeds in the ground. The gardener believes that each plant will blossom when it is ready and does not hurry the growth process. Similar to this, believing in God's plan means waiting patiently for his ideal timing while being aware that he is putting something lovely together. While believing in God's plan does not shield us from hardship, it does enable us to discover meaning in the face of difficulties. It is a steadfast conviction that God is at work for our benefit even while we are experiencing difficulty. We are able to see difficulties as chances for development and improvement because of this faith. Think about a blacksmith creating an iron object. To mold the iron into anything worthwhile, it must withstand extreme heat and pressure. Similar to this, accepting God's plan entails allowing difficulties to mold and improve our character, ultimately resulting in a deeper sense of purpose. Faith in God's purpose encourages resilience. It gives people the ability to face the uncertainties and failures of life with grace and unshakable trust. This fortitude comes from the conviction that God's plan will overcome every challenge we face. Consider a tree that has survived seasons, droughts, and storms while standing tall in a forest. It stands firm because its roots go far down into the ground. Similar to this, relying on God's plan enables us to maintain our faith in the face of adversity. The great sense of calm that comes from believing in God's plan may be its most important feature. Knowing that God's plan is a road to fulfillment and purpose gives one an inner calmness that transcends external difficulties. We can confront an uncertain future with optimism and confidence thanks to this calm. Think of a tourist in a distant country who is equipped with a map and a compass. The traveler is at ease, even though the surroundings are unknown because they know the tools will show them the road. Similar to how believing God's plan gives us a spiritual roadmap and compass, it also gives us calm as we navigate the uncharted territory of life. A fundamental tenet of faith is trusting God's plan, which entails giving up control, accepting divine timing, discovering meaning in hardship, developing fortitude, and enjoying inner calm. Our view of life is shaped by an act of faith that enables us to manage its complexities with unshakable faith in the divine planner of our lives. Though anxiety and dread are common human emotions, they don't have to define or rule our lives. A transforming path that helps people achieve inner peace, resilience, and a fresh sense of purpose involves overcoming these emotional obstacles. In this investigation, we explore the fundamental implications of conquering anxiety and fear, and how it can result in personal development and a closer relationship with oneself. Recognizing the presence of worry and dread is the first step to getting rid of them. It's critical to understand that these feelings are a normal aspect of being human. They act as signals, warning us of potential dangers or crucial areas in our lives. By accepting that they exist, we may start the process of comprehending and controlling them. Think of worry as a weather vane, signaling to us where we need to pay attention in our lives. Anxiety can alert us to elements of our well-being that require care, much as a weather vane shows the direction of the wind. A profound level of self-awareness is necessary to overcome fear and anxiety. It entails investigating the ideas, convictions, and earlier experiences that support these feelings. Self-reflection enables people to understand the underlying causes of their anxiety and dread, which is a crucial first step on the road to recovery. Think of self-awareness as a mirror that shows our inner environment. We can more clearly grasp our ideas and feelings by looking into this mirror, which gives us the power to choose how we react to them. Being fully present in the moment is encouraged by mindfulness practice, which is a potent technique for conquering anxiety and fear. People who practice mindfulness are able to notice their thoughts and feelings without passing judgment. Anxiety about the future and regrets about the past are let go of by remaining rooted in the present. 
a surfer riding a wave comes to mind. The surfer is fully present and tuned to the beat of the ocean at that precise instant. Similar to surfing the waves of our thoughts and emotions, mindfulness training enables us to do so without getting carried away. Fear and anxiety frequently result from unfavorable mental habits. Finding these tendencies and changing them with more helpful ideas is the first step in overcoming them. Challenges in changing these tendencies can be accomplished with the aid of cognitive behavioral approaches. Imagine negative thought patterns as well-traveled trails across a forest. We need to pave new roads if we want to shift course. Similar to this, by questioning unfavorable thoughts, we forge new mental pathways that result in healthier thought processes. It takes strength to overcome worry and dread, but you don't have to go through it alone. Getting assistance from close friends, family members, or a mental health professional can offer insightful advice and motivation. Particularly in therapy, there are resources and methods for successfully controlling fear and anxiety. Think of asking for help as extending your hand to someone while you cross a rapid river. They don't make the river disappear, but their assistance makes it safer for you to cross. Similar to how finding support helps in the process of overcoming anxiety and dread, it does not make them go away. It takes resilience, self-awareness, and self-discovery to overcome anxiety and fear. It entails accepting that these emotions exist, practicing mindfulness, overcoming unfavorable mental patterns, and getting help when necessary. Through this path, people might gain profound inner peace, a fresh sense of purpose, and the ability to handle the difficulties of life with grace. It is not a sign of weakness to surrender to God. Rather, it is a profound acknowledgement of our human frailties and an act of unfathomable faith. Surrender is a strange but immensely potent principle in a world that frequently values independence and self-control. The first step towards surrender is giving up our desire for control. It involves admitting that we cannot control every area of our lives or foresee every turn our trip will take. It is in our nature to want to be in charge, to make careful plans and to safeguard our futures. However, surrender asks us to relinquish our tight grip on life's steering wheel and give it to the one who is far more adept at finding the route than we could ever be. Imagine yourself at the edge of a huge river that is raging. We are worn out from trying to swim against the river and we are wounded and battered. On the other side, when we surrender, we float on our backs and let the river carry us. This doesn't imply that we become apathetic onlookers. Rather, it implies that we navigate the currents of life with confidence, faith, and a readiness to go in the direction that God directs. Ironically, freedom comes from giving up. We free ourselves from the shackles of worry, fear, and the continual drive to make everything perfect when we stop trying to manage every little thing. In the midst of life's uncertainty, Surrender gives us the mental and emotional room we need to breathe and discover inner peace. Imagine a bird flying. It rides the wind currents as it glides beautifully through the air. The bird has faith that its requirements will be met and doesn't worry about where it will get its next meal or where it will sleep. Similar to the birds, when we give ourselves to God, we are free to fly over life's skies, knowing that our Heavenly Father will provide for our needs. Giving God our daily worries and cares is also part of surrendering our control over life's major decisions. It's like freeing ourselves from the excessive weight we've been carrying. Jesus urges us to place our burdens on him in the Bible and promises that we will find peace for our souls. We make room for God's peace to live within us when we give him our worries, fears, and anxieties. Think about lugging a rock-filled bag. It is difficult to walk since the weight pulls you down with each step. Giving up these weights entails opening the backpack and emptying the pebbles, making you lighter and more maneuverable. As Christ carried the weight of our sins and worries on the cross, surrender is an invitation to place our burdens there as well. Trust and surrender are inextricably linked. It's about realizing that God's plan is much bigger and more complex than anything we could come up with. Surrender encourages us to believe that God is working everything out for our benefit, even when the situation seems confusing or terrible. 
Take the Bible's account of Joseph as an example. He went through adversity, jail, and betrayal. But despite everything, he believed in God's plan. In the end, Joseph understood that God used what people meant for evil. When we surrender, we are able to look beyond the immediate situation and have faith that God's intentions are being fulfilled in ways we may not fully understand. The strength of surrender is found in its capacity to free us from the burden of control, to give us the freedom to trust, to let go of our burdens, and to find comfort in God's divine plan. It's a spiritual journey where we let go of the need to control every facet of our lives and allow God to be our compass, provider, and comforter. True calm in the midst of life's uncertainty comes through surrender. A dynamic and intensely intimate faith is centered on encountering God's presence. It invites us into a connection with the divine that is transformative and goes beyond simple intellectual conviction. We shall now go into the complex nature of this holy meeting. Beginning with a keen awareness of the divine in our lives, we can begin to experience God's presence. It's similar to the startling awareness that God is always with us and that we are never alone. This insight can come to us when we are alone in a worship service or even in the midst of the bustle of daily life. Imagine yourself strolling in a lush forest as the sun's warmth permeates the leafy canopy. You recognize the sunlight at that very instant. Similar to this, as our hearts learn to tune into the spiritual rays that illuminate our spirits, we frequently experience God's presence. God's presence is profoundly intimate rather than remote or aloof. It's a relationship that goes beyond what we can comprehend. We feel God's love, grace, and compassion surrounding us in His presence like a warm embrace. This interaction says to you, you are known, loved, and cherished. Imagine how it would feel to be in the company of a close friend or a kind relative. There is a feeling of inclusion and acceptance. It's similar to that, but incomparably more meaningful to be in God's presence. It's an experience that reassures us that the one who made us is aware of who we are. We frequently undergo personal transformation in the moments when we sense God's presence. It's as if a light has been turned on in the depths of our souls illuminating regions in need of healing, direction, or development. These encounters can be subtle prods or deep discoveries, but they always move us in the direction of development and progress. Take the example of the Apostle Paul's journey to Damascus. Along with changing his life, his encounter with the risen Christ altered the course of Christian history, similar to how experiencing God's presence can change our course, motivate us to achieve larger goals, and give us the strength to face problems. God's presence frequently inspires strong feelings of awe and appreciation. It's comparable to being in awe of the universe's majesty while standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon. We are in awe of the majesty, the wisdom, and the unending love of God. The Bible's Psalms are rife with testimonials of awe and thanksgiving for God's presence. King David, who wrote numerous Psalms, frequently expressed his gratitude and praise, realizing that God's presence was his greatest value. God's presence can be felt throughout one's entire existence. Others may be quiet and unobtrusive, while others may be intense and unforgettable. These encounters can grow when spiritual disciplines like prayer, meditation, and Bible study are practiced regularly. Consider taking care of a garden. A thriving, vigorous garden needs regular attention, irrigation, and nutrition. Similar to this, our spiritual lives need constant care and attention. We cultivate a climate where the seeds of divine experiences can germinate and blossom through our daily activities. Being in God's presence is a sacred journey that strengthens our relationship with God, awakens our awareness of the divine, and transforms us personally. It grows best in an environment of regular spiritual activities. It's a never-ending journey. A relationship that is becoming closer with the one who never leaves us and leads, comforts, and inspires us on the road of life. Prayer and meditation are strong spiritual practices that are essential for strengthening our faith, promoting inner tranquility, and developing a closer relationship with God. We'll explore the importance of these rituals in a Christian's life in this investigation. In essence, prayer is a conversation with God, a channel of communication between the Creator and His creation. It's a hallowed place where we can communicate with the one who genuinely cares about us 
and share our thoughts, feelings, hopes, and concerns. There are no set hours or locations for prayer. It is a constant conversation that can take place anywhere, whether solitary or in the middle of daily activity. Think of prayer as a sincere discussion with a dear friend. Prayer is an opportunity to open up to God in the same way that you would with a good friend about your joys and sorrows, your hopes and anxieties. It's a place where it's okay to be open and vulnerable. On the other hand, meditation entails reflecting on God's word and looking for its deeper significance. It's an intentional and targeted activity that enables us to consider scripture, consider its lessons and put those lessons into practice in our daily lives. The goal of meditation is to fill our thoughts with heavenly truths rather than empty them. Think of meditation as the process of enjoying a filling meal. Every bite is enjoyed and every flavor is tasted. Similar to this, as we meditate, we relish the deep insights and truths found in Scripture. It involves letting God's Word enter our hearts and change the way we think. Meditation and prayer go wonderfully together. Meditation is God speaking to us through His Word, whereas prayer is how we communicate with Him. We communicate our needs, look for direction, and find peace through prayer. Through meditation, we gain insight, motivation, and a clearer knowledge of God's will. Think of prayer and meditation as the two wings that a bird needs to fly high in the sky. Prayer draws our hearts closer to God, and meditation firmly establishes us in His Word. Together, they give us the ability to travel the spiritual path in harmony and with intention. Our inner serenity is significantly influenced by both prayer and meditation. We put our worries and sorrows upon God through prayer, receiving comfort in His presence. When we meditate, we come face to face with the Prince of Peace whose words calm our souls. Imagine your inner calm as a tranquil pond. Prayer is like clearing the clutter and garbage from the water's surface, which makes it calm and clear. On the other hand, meditation is like plunging into the pond's bottom, where the waters are untouched and teeming with life. It takes commitment and focus to develop a regular meditation and prayer practice. Quality is more important than quantity. Our spiritual lives are gradually transformed by regular, sincere dialogues with God and deliberate reflection on His Word. Think of meditation and prayer as everyday activities for the spirit. These spiritual practices strengthen our spiritual well-being, much as physical exercise improves our bodily health. They gradually bolster our faith, increase our sense of inner tranquility, and create a close relationship with God. In the life of a Christian, prayer and meditation play a crucial role. Conversation with God during prayer creates a secure environment for openness and vulnerability. We can contemplate God's Word through meditation in order to gain insight and comprehension. Together, they cultivate a well-balanced spiritual life that promotes inner tranquility and a closer relationship with God. And now let's go before Almighty in a prayer for trust and inner peace. God the Father, we desire the profound gift of inner peace and steadfast trust as we stand before your presence in the midst of life's storms and uncertainties. We understand that your calm is the anchor that keeps us grounded, and your reliability is the solid ground we stand on in this world full of chaos, distractions, and fears. Lord, our minds are weighed down by worry, and our hearts frequently struggle with restlessness. We come to you in these times hoping for the peace that is beyond all comprehension. We implore you to calm the storms within us, just as Jesus calmed the raging sea with a single word. Give us the calmness to face the trials of life with assurance and grace. Merciful God, we frequently find it difficult to appreciate the wider picture of your divine purpose because of the limitations of our human knowledge. Help us to remain confident in your control even when things appear confusing or terrible. May we, like Joseph during his hardships, understand that what others mean for evil, you utilize for good. Give us the knowledge to understand your purpose in everything. We are burdened by worries about our future, the safety of our loved ones, and the challenges we confront every day, dear Father. Give us the faith to let go of our worries as we bring these burdens before your throne. May your unfathomable peace guard our hearts and minds, releasing us from the power of worry and dread. God the Eternal. Your timing is impeccable, and your ways are superior to ours. Yet when our prayers don't seem to be being answered, 
we frequently get frustrated and restless. Teach us to have faith in your perfect plan, for you create all things lovely in your time. Help us to wait for your benefits with patience, knowing that you are pursuing our best interest. We want to put even more faith in you as we continue on this road of faith, Lord. Help us to strengthen our faith through praying, reflecting on your word, and spending solitary time in communication with you. May our faith in you be unflinching, unmoved by the winds of doubt or hardship like a tree with deep roots. With a sincere request from the bottom of our hearts, Heavenly Father, we offer this prayer for tranquility and faith. We yearn to be filled with the calm that only you can give and to put our faith in your unwavering love and discernment. May this prayer serve as a reminder that we find our refuge, peace, and unwavering confidence in you. Amen. Scripture, whether it be from the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, or other holy texts, holds a profound and enduring source of inspiration for countless people around the world. It offers not only spiritual direction, but also a wealth of knowledge, solace, and inspiration. In this investigation, we explore the tremendous implications of drawing inspiration from the Bible and how doing so might improve our lives and strengthen our faith. The heavenly wisdom and direction imparted in scripture are one of the most essential sources of inspiration. These ancient texts frequently include eternal truths, ethical teachings, and guidelines for leading moral lives. People might find inspiration in the wisdom that is greater than human comprehension by studying and meditating on these teachings. Consider the Bible as a lighthouse, guiding you across the choppy waves of life's difficulties. It offers direction to go safely amid the storms of doubt and ethical conundrums. The Bible is full of inspiring tales of people who battled hardship, overcame challenges, and accomplished amazing accomplishments by having faith and persevering. These stories offer motivation by highlighting the strength of unwavering faith and tenacity. Think about the Bible's account of David and Goliath. The young shepherd David used one stone and unwavering faith in God to slay the powerful behemoth Goliath. Such tales encourage people to face their own giants and persevere in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles. For individuals who are suffering and grieving, the Bible provides consolation and relief. It offers consoling words, assuring people that others share their suffering. Finding consolation in Scripture involves discovering hope and healing through its consoling verses during difficult circumstances. Think of the Bible as a sympathetic companion who shares words of consolation and confidence with you at your most difficult times. It offers comfort for the hurting heart and a ray of hope in the midst of hopelessness. Scripture acts as a moral and ethical compass, directing people to make the right decisions. They are motivated to live honorably, compassionately, and justly by it. People are inspired by its teachings to live lifestyles that are consistent with their own beliefs. The golden rule, which may be found in many ancient books, is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This idea encourages people to treat others with kindness and empathy, promoting harmonious relationships and social well-being. The sense of communion with God that results from reading scripture for inspiration is perhaps its most profound component. Sacred Poem Reading and reflection can build a strong sense of spirituality and communication with a higher power. Think of the Bible as a conduit that enables people to reach God. They are inspired by its lines to develop a more profound connection with the sacred, going beyond the confines of the physical world. It is a meaningful and transformational journey to find inspiration in the Bible. It entails seeking divine guidance and wisdom, drawing strength from inspiring stories, finding comfort in trying circumstances, using it as a moral compass and fostering a closer relationship with the divine. People who engage in this exploration not only find inspiration but also a source of meaning, purpose, and faith that enhances their lives. The phrase, be still and know that I am God, has always been a source of comfort and hope. It encourages us to experience God's presence in our lives, achieve inner peace, and trust in His plan. May we constantly keep in mind that our faith is our anchor and that we can find strength and quiet as we traverse the problems of this world. We appreciate your participation as we examine faith, inner tranquility, and God trust. 
please spread the word about this message to others who might benefit from its lessons. Together we may strengthen our faith, cultivate inner tranquility, and have faith that the all-powerful is watching over us.